J here today to reference Carolyn Mace's book, Sacred Contracts, and talk specifically about one of the four survival archetypes, today focusing on the victim. Now, the victim is also the guardian of self-esteem, and so as you can see, I've highlighted a few sections from these three pages, and I want to read you the pieces that I felt most significant for us to really become aware of as we work with the victim within, and I want to also share a guided process that I worked with my own inner victim around that felt very empowering and I'd love to see if it's useful to you at all. So please make sure you like this video, leave a comment about how all of this information sits, fits and feels for you. If it brings up any questions too, please do leave those below as I love to know what this information means to and for you. So. The core issue of the victim is whether it's worth giving up your own sense of empowerment to avoid taking responsibility for your independence. The primary objective of the victim archetype is to develop self-esteem and personal power. You have contracts with people whose primary role is to help you develop your self-esteem through acts of honesty, integrity, courage, endurance, and self-respect. And those people whose contracts are linked to empowering your victim will play or have played the leading roles in awakening in you an awareness of the value of these spiritual qualities and how essential they are to your well-being. So as much as we look at the victim as the part of us that surrenders and is at the bottom of Cartman's drama triangle looking up to the rescuer to save them from the punisher or the persecutor that is out to get them and they just feel like the entire world is on top of them. Instead of looking at the victim as only that, what if we actually looked at the victim as the part of us that wants victory more than anything? and that has the ability to actually achieve it when we understand that self-esteem and personal power are what will help us shift out of being the victim into being the conscious co-creator of a reality we can be victorious within. Remembering that realistic evidence appearing legit in tomorrow's yesterday is what this moment is. And when we're not at the bottom of the triangle looking up to others to do for us that which we are unwilling to do for ourselves, when we actually become the ones that will do it for ourselves, because we respect ourselves enough to uphold healthy boundaries instead of porous ones that leak and let other people's BS into our inner kingdom, and that we actually understand where we have given our power to others because we have idolized them, letting our eyes idle on something outside of ourselves when the truth is that finger pointing outward has three pointing back to me. And when we realize that, then we say, wait a minute, when I am idolizing others, I am not looking to myself to be the one that I was hoping to see outside of me. And so then is when we can do a process to help support the victim within us to feel safe, to set boundaries that will actually reflect and respect an empowered self, that will allow us to call our power back from all of the places that we previously used to give it away to. Because when we go through the sacred sojourn of the soul and we enter the dark night of the ego, night with a K being because the knight in shining armor only has its armor on when the damsel is in distress and need because of the punisher he oftentimes must then take on in order to save her. Well, that dynamic is only relevant if we will not choose to be the one that guards our own self. 
And it doesn't mean we have to do it all by ourselves either, because that is just a different variation of isolation, which is unhealthy and unnatural. And if we were meant to do life alone, we would have been born on an island, which if you were, good choice. Hopefully with others, because there aren't many that don't have others on it. But I'm going to share with you a process that I went through with my own inner victim which if you imagine your body as a kingdom, so just take a few moments to just close your eyes and then I'll share what I experienced so that you can go through and substitute what resonated for me based on my map of the world and then put in place of that what will serve you best. And if using what worked for me it can benefit you until you find something better, by all means do. So closing your eyes and then entering into your own heart center and walking through the corridors of the inner kingdom within you to find the room where the victim within has been held up, locked up. And when you open the door, envision you see the victim part of you in all its forms in one. Every time you have felt victimized, that part of you has held that memory for you. So thank it and understand how heavy that burden has been on it, the character that has played the part so well for you. And so going over to that victim within who is hunched over on the floor with its back turned to the bed, arms crossed over its heart, protecting it and keeping it small and contracted. And you see this part of you fighting so hard to stay as it has been because that is what it knew to keep it safe up until now. And approaching the victim within you it is time for you to do so as the responsible adult, the one that is able to make a better choice because you have more resources now, that you are able to offer that victim within you. And so when you see how scared that part of you has been, ask what it would take to move its scared self into its sacred side. And when I had that conversation with mine, it responded with, what does sacred even mean? And my response was presence, presence in this present now moment, which resonated and felt okay. Because when we see how many places we have previously plugged our beliefs into, the outside world, her, she, has done that so many times to so many things, people, places, situations, memories, traumas, dramas, plugging in beliefs about herself, us, into that, which in that moment when I asked how to move out of the scared side into the sacred, it was about severing those cords to the not now moments that would keep us out of our present power. And in so doing, then it was asking, what would make you feel safe, darling? And the answer was, Louise Hay did a guided visualization of putting your inner child out to play. So we can actually use this visualization for the other archetypes within us too. But when I was conversing with this aspect of me in this dark room that I had neglected her in for so long, asking her what it would take to call her present, that exercise of Louise Hayes came to mind where she said before going to work she would actually talk to her inner child and let her inner child go out to play in a 
forested area or lush meadows, whatever it was that made her child feel safe. And so I asked my victim what would make her feel most safe and fun, what would be most fun for her. And it then took me to part of my Akashic Records reading training where you actually enter into the Akashic Records through the heart and you enter into a giant library. And so that was where we went. And as I reflected on this choice, the victim within me made to go into a library of all places, the judgment, what a loser, to want to go into a library of all places came to mind and then the part of me that now sees my own beauty of mind and how much I value truth and wisdom then replaced that judgment which I have repurposed the label of loser but it is very akin to the victim that did not know to do that for myself back when I thought others thought that of me whilst in high school, which then brought me to a high school library with a librarian that made judgments about my outfit and that I took personally and she, the victim in me, held on to for all those years. And so what I did when entering into the inner kingdoms library within me was to see the guides that normally I check in with that actually go fetch the Akashic records of the ones that I access on behalf of in order to get out information about soul profiles and blocks and restrictions to help lighten the load which I'm not offering so that's part of what brought me to this present moment. And in so doing, then I thought of the librarian and actually brought in a librarian character that was never there before. And when I brought in the librarian character at the main desk, so to speak, instead of envisioning it to be the librarian that was mean to me or unkind towards me, judgmental, I saw more of a luminescent light being, and then in tuning in, I realized it was my higher self. And so then my inner victim was in a library with my highest guide there as hers, making her feel safe and comforted and as if she had access to the highest part of me, of us. And so that was what made my inner victim feel safe. And I encourage you to really do a similar process to find where your inner victim would feel safe because that becomes the rabbit hole that you can enter into any time the chaos and the drama and the trauma of the outside world seems to be too much. Go within. Instead of seeking an external coping mechanism of choice, as we so oftentimes do, what if we actually used this moment of calmness to actually create a rabbit hole, so to speak? Maxwell Maltz talked of that in Psycho-Cybernetics, which is a phenomenal read. And if we create this inner rabbit hole that I refer to as an inner sense of home that we can bring with us everywhere we roam, that then is when we are able to find comfort in the chaos because we have trained ourselves how to create the memory when we're relaxed so then we can access that memory and that emotional state of calmness in a moment that doesn't feel so calm in our lives. So I hope this is useful to you and the reminder too that the victim within is the part of you that wants to see you win more than anything. And so instead of feeling at the bottom of the triangle looking for someone to save you from yourself oftentimes because that triangle is always 
played out within ourselves as to why it is able to actually be perpetuated by other characters in the game of life outside of us, instead of seeing ourselves at the bottom. What if we inverted that and saw that the victim was actually the one that knows how to win when we are respectful of the boundaries within? I hope this serves you. I very much look forward to hearing what it means to you, what it means for you, and what you're going to do with it. Have a great day. Laura J. Namaste, Namago.